Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. It's time for me to upgrade my 48 volt backup system from the little 120 volt inverter. I'm gonna step up the power something serious with this new Sun Gold SPH6548P. This inverter just got its UL certification. It is a 120 240 volt inverter, 6500 watt rated. So if you're looking for all the details on this inverter, you found the right video. Let's get right into it. So I'll give you a brief overview of the SPH inverter before I put it on the wall. So I'll show you the layout of it right here. Your PV comes in on the right side. It's got two channels. Our battery inputs are right here near the power switch on the right side of the machine, right there to the terminals. And we have our COM board sitting right there. And we've got three cooling fans back through there. We've got a generator input to terminals right there, a load and a grid input also going to their corresponding terminals right there. Nice terminal blocks on this one, neat and tidy. And there are parallel connection ports right there because you can stack this inverter and even make three phase out of it if you wanted to. You've got a Wi-Fi port, RS-45 port, all kinds of stuff. If we look on the right hand side of the inverter, you can see our filter media right there. We have filter media on both sides of the inverter. So the airflow comes in from the top of the inverter out through the bottom. So those filters keep any dust and debris from getting to the electronic components inside the inverter. There's our data tag right there. I'll include a slide of the specifications and data on this inverter. If we look on the left hand side of the inverter, we have our AC or our grid input breaker on that side right there. QC pass sticker covering one of the screws on the cover to the internal components. So I pulled the main cover off the inverter to get a look at this inverter and its build quality. We got pretty neat wire organization. You know, nothing just spaghettied everywhere. Everything's zip tied down, secure. Uh, nice plastic ducting over all the heat sinks to direct the airflow to keep everything cool. Large heat sinks. Good size wiring in this one. Appears robustly built. Uh, pretty clean. And just like I do on the batteries and things, I went through and checked every single mechanical fastener in this inverter. Nothing was loose. Everything was torqued down properly. I always like to just check everything just to make sure, but all good with this one. Well, it's time. Time to say farewell to the lead time inverter after several months of flawless operation. Completely happy with this inverter. No complaints. Well, one complaint. I need 120, 240 volt split phase for some cool stuff I'm going to do. So this inverter will not be forgotten. You'll see it again in a completely different use case scenario. So thank you, Lee Time Inverter, for serving me well over the last few months. You'll not be forgotten. You'll be reborn on a new system. So I got the Sun Gold mounted on the wall. I used some pan head screws because I've got half inch plywood back behind that concrete board right there. They give you concrete anchors if you're anchoring to a brick wall or a concrete wall, things like that. But those pan heads should hold it firmly and put it up by yourself fairly easily. All right, so before I hook anything else up to this inverter, I want to make sure it powers up first. I've got the battery cables connected right here. The two gauge cables that were already here, SunGold even recommends two gauge cable. Uh, I usually like to run a little oversized cable, but for what I'm doing right now and the installed breaker, which is only a 100 amp breaker, two gauge is more than sufficient. I've already used a pre-charge resistor across the breaker to charge the capacitor bank. So I guess now I need to see if it will power up. So hit the switch right there and looks like it's powering up. I'll give it a second. There we go, powering up. Cooling fans come on for a test. Get the cooling fans come on right there. Let's so I can take this shipping guard, this plastic off right here. And uh, there we go. So there is the display. I turned the lights off so you can see it. So pretty decent little display on there. A lot better than some, so just showing you that. I'll go over the display and the setup. More on that later. I gotta get back to wiring everything up now. So I went ahead and connected my PV cable leads from the previous inverter. This string is not high enough voltage to excite the tracker and the Sun Gold. Minimum startup of 150 volts up to 550 volts. You can put 10,000 watts worth of PV on this inverter. So I've got to buy another rack and get some more panels and things like that. So the PV demonstration will be on hold for today, but I'll bring that to you in an upcoming video. We'll make a note on this inverter compared to a lot of other ones. The 
knockouts, they come with the, you know, anti-short bushing in there, but I always try to use a conduit where applicable. This will be a conduit eventually right here as well. So three quarter trade size knockouts fit these pre-drilled openings perfectly. So feel free to use off the shelf components. And be aware of the placement of the user interface switch. There are the leads to the switch right there. So if you have a conduit where your PV is, you got to reach around way at the back to cycle your switch. So uh, that could have been placed in a better spot in my opinion. So these are the same cables from my previous inverter and Sungold recommends two gauge cables. So these are two gauge. And you can see it fits the battery input terminals perfectly for this 6,500 watt inverter. So looking over here to the AC input and output of this inverter, you can see I've only got the load terminals connected. I don't have any grid inputs and a generator input. I can put a twist lock on and use a 240 volt gasoline generator to demonstrate operation if there's enough of you that request this. So let me know in the comment section, but I'm just powering loads and Sungold recommends eight gauge conductors. And that's what I have is eight gauge conductors for the 240 volt operation. And just because this inverter is rated for 120, 240 volt split phase, Sungold still lets you use this inverter at 120 volt if you go through the selection menus. So what it will do, it will change from having these two phases 180 degrees out, it'll have these both common together 120. You have to upsize your neutral to if that fits your use case scenario. That's pretty cool. And if you do happen to be using a grid charging input or generator input, Sungold also recommends eight gauge conductors running it in 240 volt mode. And each of the PV inputs on the inverter are capable of carrying 18 amps. Sungold recommends 12 gauge cabling with a 25 amp two pole breaker. And as soon as you power up the inverter, it is already in 120, 240 volt split phase mode. You have to go in and reconfigure if you're wanting straight 120. So I'll just show you some voltage readings on the inverter. I've got it selected for the 120 volt selection. You can do uh, 127, 120, 115, all kinds of different options with this inverter. So neutral to L2, 120.2, neutral to L1, 120.2, and then L1 to L2, 240.9. And of course the inverter is pure sine wave. I will show you both legs. All right, there's L2 to neutral, L1 to neutral, and then 240 volt L1 to L2. Okay, I'm on page two of the user interface display. You just push the up button. I've got the light software you can see. There's a bad glare on the camera. You know, looking at the display, you can see it clearly. It's just, just glare from my lighting. So you can see the battery is delivering two amps of current. This inverter is just an idle. So you got a two amp idle current on the sun gold and let me turn the lights back on for you and i've got the inverter just on a single battery so we can compare what the bms is displaying to what the inverter is drawing so fairly accurate so two amps give or take idle consumption and just a quick note on that idle consumption if we're averaging two amps times 52.5 volts uh, 105 watts plus or minus idle consumption on the sun gold so if we're burning 105 watts times 24 hours that's 2.52 kilowatt hours so depending on how much solar time you have during the day your tracking window if you've got a four hour peak window you're going to need 630 watts out of your array just to keep up with the idle consumption on this inverter and if you have a five hour window good positioning and things like that you'll need roughly 500 watts of glass just daily to keep up with what the sun gold is going to eat out of your battery bank and the cooling fans are on right now on the inverter there's no load it's just idling but you can hear the fans and they run at low speed pretty much all the time in the, you know, around the 80 degree temperature range so just be aware of that that's the noise level and how much air do the fans move on low speed? This is just one of the filter grates at the top, one of the intakes. So I'll just put a paper towel up there, see if it'll hold that paper towel. So pretty good airflow considering the other vent is wide open. So it is holding that paper towel on there nicely. Let me show you the accessories that the Sun Gold inverter comes with. You have your user manual, which is a pretty good user manual. I will give them credit. It is on par or better than some user manuals out there. Shows you all the different configurations, how to hook everything up, every specification you could possibly know, troubleshooting, fault codes, you name it, it's in there. 
It comes with a serial port communication cable. So if you're paralleling multiple inverters together, this is how they talk to each other. It comes with a warranty card so you can keep track of everything. So there's your customer information, your product information, things like that. Comes with a QC pass certificate. So 210 of 2025, it passed its inspection. Comes with a hardware packet. So you've got some concrete anchors, you've got some lugs right there, some different spare screws and things, some anchors, just a little nice accessory pack to have. And you have a Wi-Fi dongle, so you can connect the inverter to Wi-Fi and use their app to monitor the inverter's operation. Uh, you have to have internet to make this work and i have no internet right here so this is not going to work for me i'm trying to find out if there's a workaround where i can use it on straight bluetooth but for now i will not be using the wi-fi dongle it also comes with a battery communication cable so you can let the inverter communicate to your bmss so let me show you that now so i've turned this battery off and got another battery on now got the communication cable connected to the inverter coming down to this amp and vent wall mount battery right here let me show you the communication protocol how i had to get it to work so i've got the battery set for pace mod bus for the 485 so i've got option number 32 in the program menu set for 485 and option 33 in the program menu, which is the battery communication protocol to WOW, which is SunGold's communication protocol. And going SunGold to SunGold through the communication of the battery did not work. Right there, the battery has it, but it did not work. Going pylon on the inverter, pylon to the battery, that did not work. But I found that the Pace Modbus, at least on this battery right here, worked well communicating to the SunGold inverter. So it's currently communicating to the battery. I'm going to pull the communication cable just off screen. So I'll show you here the click. There is the cable. We'll get a fault here in just a second. Fault code 58. Give it just a minute. And there we go. Alarm code 58, which is lost communication with BMS. And I'll plug the COM port back in. Back to communicating, back to normal. Now I'm sure some of you will ask or either leave a comment about the inverter looking similar to a SRNE inverter. I dog-eared a page in the manual right here, actually page 50. So right here when SunGold is talking about USB communications, so you can get the software, download it from the official website of SRNE. The inverter also has dry contacts. I showed you a little snippet of that at the beginning of the video. You can do an automatic generator start stop. Your generator can handle that. And this has a settable time clock, time discharge. So you can do some peak demand shaving if that's what you're into. But this is not a grid tie rated inverter. It is for off grid use only. It is UL 1741 listed. They just got the certification on this inverter recently and I'll include a slide of that as well. So I've got the Sun Gold inverter running for its first load, its maiden voyage. Let me get that light so you can see better. Uh, the menus right here see it flashes between L1 and L2, showing your loads on each leg. That's just a 120 volt load. It's a uh, 20 amp, 48 volt battery charger going to another battery. So you can see the AC output on line two is was 0.2, and then line one's 8.4 right there. Go to the next menu, showing your your loads right there. L2 load. L1 load is 1.0 kilowatts, shows your battery voltage right there, PV input, grid inputs. Uh, there's no PV or grid input, of course. There's your battery load calculation right there, 22 amps, and my display on the battery showing 21.6 off screen, so that's fairly accurate right there. There's how much energy has moved through right there, and that's what I'm showing on my little shunt too, because I'm running a test on the battery at the same time. So 0 0.3, 0 0.3 right there, pretty good. And 43 degrees Celsius is the temperature of the heat sinks in the inverter right there. ID number one, cause it's a standalone. There's no paralleling or nothing on this setup, just a single inverter. And then showing you some settings and things. This is just a display showing you six and a half kilowatts, 48 volt inverter, 550 on the PV, so just some, some basic placeholders for a display screen right there. And it shows you a little load icon right here on the side, kind of gives you an idea of how loaded the inverter is. 
So I've just shown you the main use. So I'm gonna wrap up the video for today. I could spend an hour on this inverter very easily going through all the little small details about it and all that good stuff, programming menus, things like that. Uh, now it's up to you. What do you want to see next on this inverter? Do you wanna see the programming set up? Things like that. Of course you wanna see PV. That might take me a little bit because I've gotta buy a rack. I've gotta buy a whole set of panels. I gotta trench in some PVC about 250 feet away. So that might take me a minute to get that done. But in the meantime, please let me know what you want to see next on this inverter. I will gladly oblige to the best of my abilities. If you have any ideas of you know, what kind of demonstrations you'd like to see on this inverter, please put it in the comment section as well. And what I'm thinking about doing is taking this, using this inverter's output, and maybe putting on the grid feed or generator feed on my other inverter, something like that. So open to ideas. But my initial impressions of the inverter, it seems to be a quality built unit. I don't have any doubts that it should serve me well, should run pretty good. This one should easily handle whatever I'm going to throw at it. Now, if you're going to push it at 6,500 all day, every day, you may want to look at their larger models. They've got 10,000 watt models in this style as well. And I think they even got an 8,000. But if you want to look into this inverter further, I will have a convenient link in the video description down below. And at time of filming, it is fairly affordable for what it is. Just remember, you have to supply your own breakers and things like that. Be sure to add that cost into your budget as well. But I hope you enjoyed the video today. Thank you for watching. I look forward to seeing your comments in the comment section. I always love interacting with you and want to hear your ideas and thoughts on what you want to see next on this inverter. Hope you have a good day. Y'all take care. Be safe. I will see you on the next one. Special thanks to Sun Gold Power for providing this field testing sample for me to evaluate and demonstrate your inverter's capabilities and perform long-term durability testing. Thank you.